The following is a presentation of IMG, America's home for college sports. Live from Quaker Steak and Lube in Edison, this is the Rutgers Basketball Preview Show. Featuring Coach Steve Peichel. For the next hour, we'll give you a sneak peek of the basketball season with the head coach of the Scarlet Knights. Tonight's show is brought to you by... If you've got a question for Coach Peichel, give us a call at 877-384-1869. That's 877-384-1869. Now, let's go inside Quaker Steak and Lube to talk Rutgers basketball. All right, welcome inside Quaker Steak and Lube, Route 1 in Edison. It is the Rutgers basketball preview show with the head coach of your Scarlet Knights, Steve Peichel. Give it up. How are we doing? <laughs> doing great. It's a great night. You know, really appreciate you having me here. This is a great environment. I appreciate all the people that have come down to I can't wait. Season's right around the corner. And you can tell I lost my voice a little bit, but I'll get it back to get at those referees. 2018-19 starts in a few weeks. You got November 9th. Uh, let's before we get into this year and this team, I want to take you back a little bit to March. And the little run you guys had at Madison Square Garden and what went into that and what you learned from it in year two as a head coach and really the, the fan support that you had, the, the environment at the Garden. And when you left that place, I guess it was the Friday night, just the feeling you had as you were getting set because the way you guys work a bunch of lunatics, you already had your <laughs> mind on, on year three. Yeah. Well, you know what? It just showed the power of Rutgers Nation and the great people. I remember going outside after the game was over, and I saw so many R's and so many people screaming and excited about the team and the program. But, you know, I'm honored to be the head coach. I love this place. I think it's a special university. Um, you know, and I love my team, too. And I think at the end of last year, you kind of we were finally healthy. Mike Williams, a huge part of our team, was 14 games missed. He came back, and Eugene came back. And, you know, we played, you know, the way I would like. We were a little bit older. Gio was terrific. You know, Corey was terrific. And, uh, you know, it was just exciting, exciting to be in the garden with all the Rutgers Nation. And, you know, I look forward to more days like that at sure. the rack, at the garden, wherever they want to send us. Did you give yourself any time to enjoy anything? Yeah. Or, I mean, that, that season ends. <laughs> You take a few days off? I think I went right on the road the next day. It's a good time to go recruiting. See, that's the yeah, thing we people were good. don't understand yeah. about you guys as head coaches. It's like 24-7, 363. I'm sure you have a day off here and there, mm -hmm. but it never ends. Yeah, I mean, it really doesn't, but, you know, that's what we signed up for. I wouldn't have it any other way. When you're building a program, you got to take advantage of, you know, any, any time that you have a great, you know, win or a great, um, you know, weekend like that, but uh, there's a lot of great things going on at our university, in our athletic department. You know, I'm excited to be a part of it. I'm excited about my team. I'm excited about the guys that have said yes to Rutgers um, that are in our program, and uh, I'm excited I have my staff back. Um, they're always trying to steal them, and, and, and they don't get to steal my guys, which is a good thing. And uh, I'm excited. I think we're going to have uh, a terrific year. And I wanted to get into the staff, but since you brought it up, we'll just get that out of the way now. The idea that they are together now in year three. How difficult is it? And when you're recruiting, how important is it for the stability of the program when you're looking at these kids to say that these are my assistants and they're going to be here? Well, you know, when you're building a program and when I took it over, a really good game plan. You know, you hire a great staff and you hire a staff that can develop players. Like players have to get better. And then you go about getting recruits that want to be at Rutgers. Um, you know, people say they're under the radar or you know, some of those kind of recruits, I look at it as, you know, they're kids that I love and the kids that can shoot, pass, and dribble and that have a passion for basketball. Um, you know, and you want to stay on course with that. You don't want to change and change your staff. And, you know, we've had enough changes at Rutgers. We've changed leagues. We've changed athletic directors. We've changed basketball coaches. That just lends to, you know, a program that is always on the mend and always rebuilding. Um, now, you know, three straight years, same staff. You know, our sophomores became juniors, our freshmen became sophomores. Um, we continue to recruit, I think, at a high level. Um, you, you know, and we got a good game plan moving forward. Our guys are getting better. Just like I said, you know, when you see Eugene Omarui and you see Issa Cham, 
if you don't think they got better, I'm going to show you a tape of their first practice freshman year. Sure. And their bodies have gotten better. And Shaq Dorson's body is tremendous. And he's jumping now and running. You know, so I think the returning guys have gotten better. We've recruited at a high level. I love my freshman class. You know, so we have a good game plan. We just stay the course. You know, there's no transition. Keep our staff. Um, you know, eventually I'm going to lose these guys. Brandon right. Knight's terrific. He's going to be a head coach. Jay Young's been a head coach. Carl Hobbs was, you know, the Atlantic 10 coach of the year two times. I mean, so he's, he's been a head coach. And I got a lot of guys, Shoes Vitrone, terrific job. Brian Dewar, terrific job. Ben Asher, terrific job. Steve Haynes, been a head coach. He's been Division II coach of the year in the, in the metropolitan New York area. So I got, like, really good guys. So we're not going to be able to keep them forever. Um, but right now, you know, continuity is what our program needs. And uh, we got to keep doing a great job of keeping them. No doubt. And you mentioned the freshman class. And we can go through them one by one. But what excites you most about the group that's come in? I've seen them at practice, and you can see – it's a good level. I mean, they can shoot. They get up and down the floor. What do you like most about the group you brought in? You know, what, what I tried to do when I got the program was, you know, you have to have good players in every class. And you can't have a good senior class and no juniors. You can't have, you know, no freshmen and, and two sophomores. So I think we've done a really good job of adding good players to some of our classes. Shaq Carter now goes into our junior class. He's a good player. And he goes in with Eugene, much improved. And Issa Cham, it's a good junior class. They can play our sophomore class now that we put Peter Kiss in that class. It's Gio, it's Peter Kiss, really good backcourt guys. And then Mamadou DeCorey in their sophomore class. And now our freshman class, because we redshirted Miles Johnson, who I think people are going to really like, he can really play. Um, he's lost 35 pounds, first of all. I need that diet myself. Hmm. Um, 35 pounds. And... Uh, he could score in a low post. I love him. He's smart. He's a terrific passer. He's a shot blocker. And he's got a seven foot seven wingspan. And if he was here, he'd have a lot of wings, too. He's got a big <laughs> appetite. Um, and so I'm excited about him. We got a center and a true center that can score. And then we have Ron Harper, who has a seven foot two wingspan, size 20 feet. I think he's just scratching the surface of what he could do. Great kid from a great family, worker. Um, he's versatile, shoots the ball. I mean, seven threes yesterday in our scrimmage in practice. I mean, he can do a lot of things and, and love his enthusiasm. And then Montez Mathis is as good an a a of an athlete as we've had in the program. He's an attack to the rim. He can shoot the ball and he makes plays too, which I'm really excited about. High school, he scored a lot. He shows signs of being a really good playmaker, making plays. And then uh, Caleb McConnell is 6'6", six, six, maybe 6'6 six, six and a half point guard. Uh, can play the one, two, or three, shoots it, really can shoot it, floater in the lane, tough kid, great family again. So, like, I really like, you know, the pieces, and they're going to get better with the program. And they want to be at Rutgers, and I love that. Which is awesome, absolutely. There's a couple of ways you guys can get in uh, with Coach. If you guys are out here, you go check out Jordan over here. We take some questions from the crowd uh, on Twitter at Rutgers Radio, and the phone number is 877-384-1869. The one question I want to get out of the way uh, quickly and you mentioned the scoring and what some of these guys are going to be able to do and there's certainly a lot of promise no doubt you lose guys though like Corey and Deshaun and Mike and each one brought something different Corey certainly had some nights where he struggled to shoot the ball and then he had nights where he would light it up and the tournament certainly showed that you had a guy in Deshaun who did a lot of the dirty work um, could score could rebound would block shots and Mike was just a guy that when he wasn't there you knew he wasn't there so Take it one by one, however you want. How do you replace them, though? I, you know, I miss them already. Uh, they're great kids. First of all, Deshaun and Mike Williams both graduated, and that's, like, just unbelievable. I love that. Um, and Corey will be back in the summertime to graduate, too. So um, we're going to miss all three of them. They did a tremendous amount for our program, and, and, and I'm so happy. They're all going to continue playing basketball. At the end of the day, I want our guys to graduate and then keep playing, you know, and, right. and, and they're all going to have that opportunity to do that. But they all meant so much to us. I mean, Corey, you know, carried our program at times for the last few years. I mean, he's an awesome kid and, you know, a really, really talented basketball player. And I still say, I said it last year, and I would say it again, his best basketball is ahead of him, you know, and I hope someday to see him in the NBA and be real proud for him. But he, great family, great kid, and, and really represented us the right way. And, and Mike you know, gave everything he had. Mike wasn't the most talented guy on the roster, but heart and toughness and bought in from day one. Love him, miss him. 
Uh, but he'll keep continuing to play. And Deshaun's heading over to England to play professionally. So, you, you know, and Deshaun was a guy who could get you 20 on any given night. And there's not a lot of those kind of players, especially in our league. So we're going to miss those three. But hopefully every year we keep graduating great kids. And, and these guys all can't come back. And I love it. They're here for Midnight Madness. You know, Corey's been back working out with our guys. I love it. I want them to come back. And they're a part of this, you know, what I think is going to be a really good basketball program moving forward here. Geo last year started out hot as could be, ended real well. Probably had that little bit of that freshman slump. What do you expect out of him? What has he improved on in his game going into year two? I mean, he's, he, he's first of all, his body's gotten better and stronger. I mean, if you look at a picture of him day one and then now, and Dave Van Dyke, who's on my staff, is a strength and conditioning guy, does an unbelievable job. Um, so I got to really tip my hat. And Rich Campbell keeps mm -hmm. guys healthy. Um, but Gio's body has changed. Gio's a good player. I mean, he shoots passes and, and dribbles. Um, he's become a really good leader. Um, he's improved a lot this summer. His range has improved. He'll have the ball in his hands. You know, good things can happen. He really knows how to play. And I think he got a tremendous amount of confidence from last year. You know, he played at the biggest stages and, and, and is good. So. The difference, though, year two from year one. So, you know, you talk about – I saw Media Day uh, in Chicago with you, and I saw your press conference, and a lot was about the Big Ten and the conference and how difficult the conference is. And for a guy like that who – you know, maybe last year teams did focus on Corey or Deshaun. There, I would think he's going to get their best look now in year mm -hmm. two. Just the difficulty he'll have and how you think he'll adjust to it. I mean, he's a marked guy. Yeah. Now. And I say that's the one thing Corey – you know, when Corey leaves now, you're, you're the guy that's the first name on the scouting report. And so, you know, he understands that. He's got a really good feel for the game. I mean, he is a guy that comes to practice every day. Now, we got good leadership. He and Eugene and Shaq Dorson have been tremendous. Our chemistry is good. These guys do a lot more things together. They practice harder. They practice better. And we're a much better passing team, and we have bigger size at every position. So I think those things are really going to, you know, help us in a lot of ways. But Geo certainly, you know, important piece of this. Going to have to score. Going to have to bring the ball up. Going to have to guard some really good players. You know, he's going to be uh, a guy that's uh, – uh, got to take care of his body because he's going to log a lot of minutes. I'll tell you one thing. Your schedule does you no favors. I mean, it is amazing watching that Big Ten schedule come out. I mean, even the <laughs> Every start. Every year they like but, me. I know, they like but, me. <laughs> but even the fact that you start with the back-to-back -back ones as you do, I think it's Wisconsin and Michigan State. Oh, that's easy. Uh, yeah. There's really – and I know there's no easy games. I get it. But, my God, it's just – it's ne and it's wrapped around Miami and St. John's and Seton Hall. Did you see the, all the days they gave me to prepare in None. between those? None for this slide. But, you know, uh, challenges. I, and you know, I, when I, I took the job, I knew there would be challenges. The league sometimes, you know, presents us with some challenges. And, you know, we always seem to be on the road, it seems like, when some of these challenges with the other leagues. Sure. But – you know, it's challenging when you're building a program. It's not just challenging within. It's not just challenging recruiting. Scheduling's challenging. You know, you just stay the course. You, you know that you do a good job with your staff. You prepare your guys. The schedule, you know, can be kind at times. And I always said, even at Stony Brook, when we were really good, I didn't need any help with the schedule. Right. You can give me any schedule. You, you know, uh, and, 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 and then when we got really good there, they would give me four days extra, five days. And I'm like, eh, I needed this one when I was building. I, right. I don't need the extra time now. These guys are good. But, you know, that's not where we are, and, and that's just an obstacle we got to continue to fight for. You're a couple of years in now. This is year three. Has it been harder? I'm not, I'm not going to say easier. Has it been harder or what you have expected? And is the league more difficult than you thought? Yeah, I mean, the league is unbelievable. And I said this to somebody the other day. Keep in mind, the fifth place team, fifth best team in our league played for the national championship. So the league only got four teams in. I don't know how that happened. The year before we got seven and the year before eight. I don't know how our fifth place team, you know, only four teams get in our fifth place team, plays for the national championship. That's how good the league is. And the league doesn't have a lot of turnover. These coaches stay. They've done a great job. Matt Painter's year, whatever, 16. Izzo's year, whatever, you know, um, Beeline's been there forever. You know, Fran McCaffrey's done an unbelievable job at Iowa. You know, these guys have been around forever. So there's no turnover in the league. So when you get turnover, you lose players. And, you, you, you know, you get a lot of different things happen. So this league doesn't have any. But it's a great league. It's, it's unbelievable that Rutgers is in a league everyone's dying to get into. That's not in, in academically, it tells people who we are as an academic institution, elite. And then athletically, it's, it's an unbelievable league, but it's very challenging too. Nothing has surprised me. I've been through these builds before. There's great people. I think I came here because of the people. 
it's unbelievable how the people are, the fans and, and, and the alums and, and the people that work at Rutgers. You know, Pat Hobbs has done a great job of, of getting great people, um, you know, at the school. And now we're building a program. And some, I know some people are impatient with it. That's, I always say, take a deep breath. It's the best league Takes in the time. country. You know, like we just got here, you know, and people will talk to me about, you know, we've been last place for six years. I haven't been here for two. That's, you know, like, <laughs> I can't take credit for those. I can't take credit for the final four in 75. I can't take credit. They've been here too. So, like, you know, you know, give us a chance to continue to build, and, and we're going to build a program that people are going to be proud of. Well, you're just getting started, and we're just getting started as well. We'll come back, get some questions from you guys in the audience. Uh, Twitter as well at Rutgers Radio and 877-384-1869. The Rutgers Basketball Preview Show with head coach Steve Peichel continues next on the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Just tailgate. It's got to be burgers. And an ice cold Coke. Real football. Y pollo asado. Hoops and wings. It sucks. Nah, hot dog. No, Dodger dog. I'll drink to that. Pass me a Coke. It's got to be crawfish. Mac and cheese. No, seven layer dip. Ribs. No contest. Hummus. Um, what? You need a hot grill. And an ice cold Coke. Of course. Football and Coke. Come on. It's got to be Coke. Game day? Race day. Calls for Coke. You know it. It's tailgate 101. When we take care of our own hearts, we're also taking care of the people closest to us. So it's comforting to know that RWJ Barnabas Health has New Jersey's most comprehensive cardiac care program with access to top specialists, minimally invasive heart surgery options, and rehabilitation and wellness programs. So get your heart checked. It's as easy as visiting rwjbh.org slash heart. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. The Chris Ash Show returns after this local timeout. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Lou. Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day specials starting at just $2.50, and the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces. Enjoy our outdoor patio and bar open all year round. On the way to the game and need something to go? Give us a call, 732-777-WING. We cater events of any size. Watch all the games, have a great time, and enjoy the best wings in the USA. 561 Route 1 in Edison. 732-777-WING. This is Cabell Philpott, host of the Nissan College Football Blitz. Heard every Saturday from noon until midnight Eastern on TuneIn.com and the TuneIn app. When there's a big play, a momentum change, and that possible upset happening, not only will we let you know, you'll hear the scores as they happen live. Catch all of the action as we count you down to the college football playoff. It's the Nissan College Football Blitz. Saturdays, noon until midnight Eastern on the College Sports Now channel on TuneIn.com and the TuneIn app. All right, welcome back to Quaker Steak and Lube, Route 1 in Edison. It is the Rutgers Basketball Preview Show with head coach Steve Peichel. The season opens up November 9th at the Rack against FDU. Uh, we will get your questions from the audience. If you want, go see Jordan over here to my left. Uh, just quickly to let you guys know, it is time for the upcoming Scarlet Knights Athletic Events presented by MGM Resorts. A lot of action coming up. Women's Volleyball taking on number 17, Purdue, Friday, 7 p.m. Come on out. Big thanks to MGM Resorts for sponsoring the upcoming events. Proud partner of Rutgers Athletics, MGM Resorts invites you to visit the Immersion Pool November 10th for food facials. Uh, visit the Borgata.com for all your entertainment experiences. MGM Resorts has to offer. A couple things from uh, social media. And you can get us, too, on Facebook Live as well. So do that. Uh, number one from Joe on Twitter, I believe this was from. He wants to know your schedule, uh, meaning what you do 24-7 in season. Uh, are you recruiting? How do you handle a game day? How do you handle an off day, a practice day, shooting day? And such? Yeah, I mean, every day is different. That's what makes it exciting. And every night I leave my office, I have a list of things to do. And then as soon as I get to the office, some – that comes up <laughs> sure you know some player has an issue or something like that and then forget about the list anymore so every day is different that's what I love about you know coaching in in season it's crazy and you're practicing and you're recruiting I mean we're recruiting freshmen and sophomores now I mean they're three years from deciding but you have to be you know freshman in high school yeah you have to be visible you have to be out right. there um you know so 
you have a lot of meetings, you gotta have a great staff. You know, you have academic meetings, you know, finding out where your guys are, you talk about travel, you talk about the scouting, you talk about the upcoming, you know, opponents. Um, you know, so the season kinda every every minute is kind of spoken for throughout throughout the whole thing and then then you get on the road and, and, and you gotta do war on the road too. So you know, every day is different as a basketball coach. That's, again, what I love. I travel a lot, but then I'm home. When I'm home, we jam in a lot of meetings in between. You know, I have a big staff. You got to stay on top of things. And then a lot is practice time and practice prep and then watching the film after practice and game film and break down the game film and then getting guys in to watch it in between their classes and everything like that. Um, you know, I, I want to do a movie one day. I want people to see what our players go through in the course yeah. of a day. I really do because I think – you know, if you realize what they're first and foremost are students. You know, Miles Johnson is in the School of Engineering. His day starts at 6 a.m. and it probably ends at 12 o'clock. And in that, he's lifted weights, he's practiced, he's watched film, and then he's taken some of the hardest classes at the university. You know, and then he's got a coach, you know, breathing down his back to rebound and, you know, do all those things. And, and he wants to be a normal college student, too. So they go through a lot. They really sacrifice a lot, our players. and and student athletes and they are you know a student too so yeah. there's, a, there's a lot asked of them and a lot demanded of them. and they really are um in season they're like professional athletes with the amount of time that they put in school for sure but when you just talk about the basketball aspect the lifting of the weights the watching the film the practice time it's a lot of time they put in and this group is great they get everything early so like they if we have practice at 10 o'clock in the morning they're there at 8 30 they you know they're getting taped and again so you don't even talk about those hours you know, to prepare your body to get ready for, sure. you know, get ready for practice and what have you. But, you know, they're, they're very busy, and, and I love them, and I love them for that. But I always like to, you know, remind people they, they got like a busy day. If you ever saw what they had, you'd be like amazed. Here is, uh, this is Tom from Facebook Live. Uh, he wants to know if the shooting will be improved <laughs> and what is a goal for the shooting percentage if you had to put a number on it for this year? I just, my goal is that they go in. So I'll tell them that's <laughs> they go in. That's the percentage we want that they go in. You know, it's hard any, any time. You know, we're going to have – I think we're going to be much improved shooting basketball team. But, you know, young guys are going to take bad shots. So, you know, shot selection goes into that. I, I mean, we have inside players now that could score. Their percentages will be higher. Um, you know, I, I think we're going to be a lot better. We have recruited now, guys. Peter Kiss can shoot, pass, and dribble, which I love. Montez Mathis, shoot, pass, and dribble. Ron Harper, shoot, pass, and dribble. Caleb McConnell, shoot, pass, and dribble. They can all make threes. You know, we just keep adding to the pieces that we didn't have. And then the guys that have come back, I think Issa Cham shot 38% last mm -hmm. year. Can, can we get him to 40, 42? You know, Gio, I think, is a terrific shooter. He didn't shoot for a great percentage. Part of that freshman, you know, shot selection. I think we can get him to 40% too from three-point land. So we have more more options, more guys, um, you know. And, and I think our whole team's going to get better. It's not just going to be. We need to get better on the defensive end. We need to be an elite defensive team. We're not. People, you know, they think we, we're not. We need to get better on that end. And I'm teaching four freshmen to defend for the first time. Right. You know, don't have to defend in high school. You're you're bigger, stronger, faster. You're going to outscore teams. So. Um, you know, we still have a lot of learning to do. We're still a young program. We have one senior in Shaq Dorson. He's the only senior in the program. So guys have to learn. But, uh, you know, I like they're coachable and, and, and they're really trying. And I think that, um, you know, will, will really bode well to our offensive numbers being better. And our passing is better. We have more guys capable of making half the, half the shot is the pass that comes to the shooter. Last year, a lot of times guys were open. Didn't get the ball when they would would have might have, you know, when they could have made it. You get it too late, then it's no longer a good shot attempt. You know those kind of things. I think we're a much better passing team. Really about the rhythm for the shot. It, it really is, and and uh, you know I think we're bigger too, and I think that helps you pass and see more and have better vision. So you know I'm very hopeful we're going to be improved in every area we have in the two years that we've been. We've improved, even though it's not to where you know I want it or where anyone else you know wants it. We've improved in almost every category. Hopefully, we'll continue that trend. You know, going back to the three-point shooting, if you go back to when you started coaching, maybe you just start at the beginning of the Stony Brook years, how much different is the game with the three-point shot? Because it seems to me, the last five, six, seven, eight years, the game really relies on the three-pointer, especially at the NBA level, but college even more so. Yeah, and you know, as the NBA changes, that's, you know, so you get the Golden State Warriors, and now everyone right. shoots threes, and every big guy needs to shoot and stuff. And back in our day, it was the... You know, the Detroit Pistons, everyone hits people, physical, knock people down. 
that was the trend for a while. Now it's whoever wins the national, you know, the NBA championship. That's what it is. So, um, you know, three point line is important. Kids like it. It's sexy. Mm -hmm. You know, dunks and three point shots. Everything else they you want had, to forget about. Deshaun got three point happy a few times last year. Mm -hmm. Is, <laughs> is yeah. it to, when you have these guys that are six 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 eight? Well, I should say six uh, six 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 eight six nine seven feet. You know they want to shoot from out there. Oh well. Is it hard to know, reel them in sometimes? Porzingis has started well, that. True. Thing, you know? Yeah, it is, and you gotta you know you gotta give a little bit with guys. You know, like Deshaun, if you're going to grab 10 rebounds, i got to put up with a couple of threes, you know. like and, Someone in. You know, like, you know, you got to understand, too, that, you know, they're kids, too, in a lot of ways. And every game is different. And, you know, a lot of times you have to, you know, yeah, take a little good, you know, with the good. You give me 10, i got to give you a couple. i got to close my eyes, you know, type of a deal. And then sometimes they go in. Sure. And then, you know, and that's sometimes the worst thing, too, when those go in, because then they shoot a couple more. You know, it, it, yes, they get very cocky, and rightly so. I always think, when I watch you on the sideline, I watch any coach, I, it's always amazing to me the work that gets put in. And then you're out there on the court, and you can see the game plan's working because you're getting the open shot, but you talk about you want to see the ball go in. Mm -hmm. The ball's not going in mm -hmm. on that night. And you have to adjust on the fly to either muck it up and play some sort of a different game. It's got to be just tremendously frustrating because you've done what you can do, and at the end of the day, you're relying on an 18 to 21 year old to actually put that ball in the hole. You know, and that's why you just try to teach your cores, and you really try to, you know, uh, get your game plan down. And you got to be able to defend in college basketball. You're not going to have 30. Everyone would like every shot to go in for 30 games. It's, M Michael Jordan didn't make every shot. LeBron James shoots 50 percent. He misses half of his shots you know, that he takes, and, and those are the best players in the world. So you're going to miss more shots than, than you're going to make. It's just, you know, the law of averages too, over the course of 30 games. You just have to be able to depend on, you know, those things that don't take talent to play defense, box out, rebound. And then those nights you really shoot the ball well, you're going to probably win by a lot. But those games that you're not, you're still going to have a chance to win because you were able to defend and do some of the things that you pr pride your program in. To, and not to kiss your rear end, but there was, uh, just to people understand, I think it was Michigan <laughs> State we were at and came to shoot around in the arena. And you guys were, I, I might have not Michigan State, but I think it was. And you guys were working on angles for the inbounds pass under the basket on the defensive end. And you went over it for it had to have been 40 minutes. And then as soon as around. we did it, they <laughs> scored. It, they screwed it up the first time. And one of the guys came over. He looked at you with a big smile. My bad. Yeah. Well, that doesn't help. You know, My bad doesn't work. I, you but know. you can't. I mean, you drill it inside their head. I you still have, have to go out and do it, though. You know, everybody has to think about this. You all have, you know, maybe have kids or something like that. You tell them to, you know, like, <laughs> you know. Don't sometimes. touch the stove, right? Yeah, yeah, touch yeah. The they stove. touch the stove. That's the same thing. And. You know, you have your players, too. You try to train them, but you also realize it's a game of mistakes. You know, you try to minimize them and try to have them bounce back from that quickly. Right. You know, I think that's the biggest thing. Like, forget about the mistake. Just get back on defense. Forget about the turnover. You know, and I think a lot of times that's what a good coach, a good coach does because you could go over and go over and go over, and as soon as they run it, you say, we went over that 45 times. Right. And you just – but, you know, it happens in the game. It happens quickly, and – you know, if, if their antennas aren't up and they're not focused on what they need to be focused on. And understand, these kids have a lot of other issues outside of, sure. you know, so you, you want their full attention all the time, but it's not possible either. Alex on uh, Twitter wants to know what you look forward to more, the ACC Challenge, you play Miami this year, or, of course, the game against Seton Hall. You know, I'm looking forward to FDU day one and, 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 and taking care of business. We try to go 1-0 and and then... You know, I like all games. Like, all those games are challenging in different ways. You know, I, I love them all. I love playing at the rack, first and foremost. So any game away from the rack, I'm not as, as excited about it. I think the rack has an unbelievable environment. I love it. And it's going to get louder and louder, too, as we continue to, you know, build this program. But, um, you know, every game is challenging. Every time we play in the ACC Challenge, we play one of the top four teams. And, and now the Big East Challenge now, is, as you know, St. John's is as good as, as, as they yep. can be. Um, and then, you know, Seton Hall's well coached. The guy does a great job. Three straight NCAA tournaments. Challenging game, you know, for us. So every game is, is, is unique in, in, in its challenges. I look forward to every one of them. Question from the audience. What do you got? Hello, Coach. How are you? Jim from North Brunswick. <laughs> coach, uh, I'm trying to manage my own expectations here, but is the NCAA tournament uh, a realistic uh, possibility this year? You know, it's funny. I, you know, I said that at, you know, I guess one of my, you know, that's your goal every year is to go to the NCAA tournament. So every year I've been a coach. I've been a coach for 26 years. It, that's the goal. 
And if it's not, you shouldn't be coach. Okay, so that is 100% the goal of every team. Back in 75, there was 173 teams. Now there's 356 teams, Division I. So that's 300, and 356 coaches going to the NCAA tournament. And that's my goal. That's what I talked to my guys about. That's what I talked to them about last year. I mean, that has to be, you know, your goal. And some programs are at a point that they're talking about Final Fours. You know, our goal is to go to the NCAA tournament. Is it realistic? We got to do a lot of things well. We got to stay healthy. We got to, you know, our freshmen have to jump on board and, and be real good. Uh, we're much improved. We're in a league that, you know, seven, eight bids. That's what's been kind of on the average. You know, and if we can move up and continue to, you know, move the program forward, then, you know, that's our goal. And that's what we expect to do this year. You know, so, you know, I don't think there's any other goal. If someone else has another goal for us, that's not me. Like, I want to go to the NCAA tournament. I came here to dance, and that's what I want my team to do, and that's what I want you guys to be a part of. And so that's going to be my goal every year this year. Is it hard? Yeah, it's hard. We haven't been there in a long time, and it's hard. And everyone's trying to do it. So when everyone's trying to do it, it makes it even harder. But, you know, that's our goal, and that's why, you know, I took this job in this league, you know, and, and, and I look forward to going after that goal. Thanks, cool. Coach. Thank Good luck you. this year. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, I'll have some more questions off social media for you. Also, I want to get your take on some of the buildings you play in on the road, the toughest places to be, uh, toughest places to travel to, and some of the coaches that you like in this league mm -hmm. as well. It is the Rutgers Basketball Preview Show. We'll have more from you guys here in the audience coming up on the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Lou. Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day specials starting at just $2.50, and the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces. Enjoy our outdoor patio and bar open all year round. On the way to the game and need something to go? Give us a call, 732-777-WING. We cater events of any size. Watch all the games, have a great time, and enjoy the best wings in the USA. 561 Route 1 in Edison. 732-777-WING. When we take care of our own hearts, we're also taking care of the people closest to us. So it's comforting to know that RWJ Barnabas Health has New Jersey's most comprehensive cardiac care program with access to top specialists, minimally invasive heart surgery options, and rehabilitation and wellness programs. So get your heart checked. It's as easy as visiting rwjbh.org slash heart. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. The Chris Ash Show returns after this local timeout. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. At Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, caring is more than a job. It's our responsibility as a business leader and as citizens of this state. Through the Horizon Foundation for New Jersey, we're committed to working alongside those who share our goals. We're caring for our neighbors by supporting programs that help them manage important health issues. We're connecting people with health education that's easier to understand and accessible to all members of our diverse communities. We're creating inspiration by supporting arts and cultural programs that entertain, illuminate, and enrich the lives of our citizens. By sharing our time and resources, we aim to be not only a better company, but a better member of the communities where we work and live. Visit us at community.horizonblue.com and learn more about how the Horizon Foundation for New Jersey is working to support organizations that make New Jersey healthier. All right, welcome back inside Quaker Steak and Lube, Route 1 in Edison. It is the Rutgers Basketball Preview Show with head coach Steve Peichel on WCTC New Brunswick. Uh, before we get back to some of the questions on social media, we do have a phone call for you, Coach. Uh, this is Matt Manalapin. You're on the Coach's Preview Show with Steve Peichel. What is up, Matt? Hey, Coach. How you doing tonight? I'm doing great, Matt. Thanks for calling. Um, so easier said than done, and I guess this a two-part question um has it generally ever been thought of by yourself and your staff that if RU was able to land let's say three of the top 10 to maybe 20 players in new jersey year in and year out that Rutgers would essentially be a top 25 basketball program year in and year out and the second part of that question is what are the challenges you see in landing that type of talent 
from the state of New Jersey year in and year out? You, you know, we are the State University of New Jersey, and we are going to recruit New Jersey like we have been for the last few years. We need to get the right New Jersey guys. Everyone says, you know, I, I love it. I love it. I said, you still got to get, you got to get the right guys. You got to get the right guys. And I want guys that believe in Rutgers and want to be here. I mean, it's a great university. Um, there's a great alumni base. We're playing the best league in the country. And, you know, we're starting to attract some of, you know, the, the good talent in this, in this area. But you have to go wherever you can. Rutgers is a national university, and we're certainly going to try our best, you know, to keep every kid home. But it's not possible. It's not possible for any school, you know, to do that in any state. And, um, you know, we feel really good about our outreach. We feel real good about the program that we're building. And, you know, the kids that come and, and play from the state, we're going to see all the benefits that, that come to a local kid that stays home. I stayed in Connecticut, and, and I can tell you the benefits that – we're there for a local player. So, um, you know, we're excited about that. And we think we're going to build a program and, and build it around good players. But if they come from California, like Miles Johnson, if they come from New Hampshire, like Geo Baker, they want to be at Rutgers. We're excited. Ron Harper's from right up the road. We love it, you know. But he's the right kid, too. He's the right kid with the right temperament and, and the right talent, um, you, you know, for us. And I think that's important, too. And, and let's factor in some academics, too. So you got to be the right student, too. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. Uh, a couple from social media for you. Uh, this is Dave on uh, Twitter wants to know about the free throws. So last year, some issues, of course. So, Jerry, you were in know. charge of free throws. I am not in charge. Jerry, you were the guy. So whenever you guys, the I'll emails I've gotten on free throws, Jerry's in I'll charge. You, so send it right to here's him. Here's why I'm not in charge. So when I played <laughs> basketball years ago, my dad told me if I want to be a good free throw shooter, you got to be a good defender, be a good free throw shooter, and you have a chance. Okay, fair enough. Take 500 free throws a day. For a month, you'll see an improvement. I did that for a month. I was a 50% free throw shooter when I started, 49% when I finished. There you go. There you go. Got nothing free, out of it. You know, free throws are mental to a lot of it. You know, it usually goes hand in hand, though. You know, we weren't a great shooting team, so free throw shooting's part of it. I think we're much improved in, in, in those areas. Then we got to get the right guys to the foul line, too. You know, but it has been an issue for us. We've done every drill. We've done, you know, a lot of different things to, you know, I think we're recruiting players that, you know, just do that more um, effectively or naturally now. Um, you know, and we'll be better from the foul line. That's the great part. We're going to be a better three-point shooting team. No doubt. And then there was another question uh, from Mike on Twitter in terms of the freshman class you were talking about, even just the newcomers that are, that are on their way in. Who do you think will have the biggest impact this season? Um, they're, they're all going to have an impact, and, and, and they need to, you know, too. We're still a program counting out a lot on freshmen. If you look at the really good teams in our league, last year Purdue I thought was the best team in the league until the big guy got an injury. They, they started four, you know, uh, four seniors, and they started the player of the year in Carson Edwards. So their sophomore was pretty special. Yeah. But, you know, we're going to play a lot of freshmen again. Um, you know, some programs don't have to play their freshmen. Um, so we're going to count on all of them. Miles certainly going to help us in the post um, a tremendous amount. He's got great hands. He can really pass. He'll be our best passer in the whole program possibly. Mm -hmm. he's, he's by far, you know, one of our better low post scorers, although we've gotten better. Shaq Carter can score in the low post. You know, Shaq Dorson has gotten better in the low post. Eugene. Uh, Mama do the court. You know, we've gotten better around the basket, so I'm excited about that. And then all three of those freshmen, Ron Harper's going to play. You know, Montez Mathis is maybe the best athlete in the program. And, and um, Caleb McConnell really can handle the ball and shoot it, and he's got great size. So they're all going to play. That's where our program is now. We have one senior, and so the freshmen are going to really be counted on. And, and uh, I know each one of them brings something different to us that we needed, you know, and they bring a versatility to in size and, and a work ethic that. In terms of, uh, you mentioned Shaq Dorson in there, and it seems like he's been battling trying to stay healthy for the last couple of years, and he is now. What type of a player will we see? Because it seemed like even last year he was just getting his feet wet, and this year he's fully healthy 100%. You know, you saw him at the end of the year a little bit. He, he's our best team defender. So, first of all, it doesn't show up in the stat sheet, but he really can defend and a ton of ball screens. He is now blocking shots at like a high, high level in practice. He didn't do that the last couple of years. First of all, he was in rehab most of his time with his, with his leg uh, being in a cast and all the different things he had to go through. So he wasn't his bouncy self. He's extremely bouncy right now. His hands are better. He's going to be a much improved free throw shooter. He's done a terrific job in practice statting him, you know, of improving, you know, his free throw percentage. But he's bouncy now. You're going to see a little bit new Shaq, and he's mature, and he's taking on that leadership role. 
you know, where he kind of blended in the last couple of years, but he never had a preseason and he never had an off season. So it's very hard. Players get better in the off season. He never had one last two years until this year. So you're going to be like, wow, he, you know, no, I think this is the real Shaq and I think he's going to have a real good year. One other question. Uh, Greg on Twitter wants to know how difficult it is to plan for the future while playing in the present and you're coaching a team now, but you also, you mentioned the recruiting during the season just kind of weighing everything and balancing out your, your calendar and your schedule. Yeah, I mean, you have to have a great staff, too. So, you know, a lot of times you have to be in the office, but you need to be six other places. And that's the hardest thing. Your freshmen need you sometimes to have a meeting with them, not jump on a plane and you're going to Texas or California, you know, to, to recruit. So, um, you know, you got many challenges. Um, you try to do the best that you can. You try to have a good relationship with your players. Um, and your staff has to be t tremendous, and, and you have to be very organized. So I think that's what we do a real good job at, and, you know, try to – every day is different. You know, like I said, some days I may jump on a plane, and some days I need to stay in and, and watch film with guys. And you mentioned the staff, and you've – a few times tonight, and they are – they're great. And one by one, they're great. You mentioned them all. The trust that you have in them, though, how that's built up over time and the relationships you've had with all of them for years, they all do different things for you. And it's, 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 it's amazing to me watching you in practice – how you let them coach and do their job, and then you take it from there, but you have 100% trust in what they're doing. It's tremendous, too. And, you know, the more you allow them to do, the more they invest in your program, too. So I think as a, as a leader, you have to be really smart. And, you know, the more responsibility you give them, the, the more they do for you, and the more they take it personal. You know, if you're the offensive coordinator, we don't, you know, it's not just me staying up all night. You know, I did that my first couple of years in coaching. I was the offensive, the defensive. The, the, I was sure. like, no, 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 my assistant's going to stay up all night too. <laughs> you know, like, it's not just me enjoying this. You, you know, they're going to have to, you know, do, we got guys in charge of out-of-bounds plays. Brandon Knight's in charge of special situations. Jay, you know, does a great job with our defense. Carl does our offense. You know, and so it's a lot of people, you know, watching film with kids and doing different, different roles. But the more you can give a guy, and these guys have got good experience. They're good. They're good. So you want to be able, want to be, be able to you know, take advantage of some of their strengths too. And I have to go on the road a lot. Right. You know, I'm the head coach. I need to be out recruiting. And so I think that's important too. And who's at home watching seems very important. These guys are great. And these guys are great. There's one other player I didn't mention too. I want to make sure. Jacob Young. Okay, yeah. So we have a player from uh, the University of Texas yeah. who is lefty guard. He's going to be tremendous. So I just want to make sure I talk about everybody on the list. You know, he was at Texas. He's one of the top 50 players in the country. Uh, comes from a great family. The Youngs, Michael Young, played for five Slamma Jamma. Houston days with Akeem Olajuwon. His brother, Joseph Jones, played at Oregon in the Final Four and played in the NBA last year. And, and he's a great kid. And he's another great. He wanted to be at Rutgers. He's a good student. He's in the gym all the time. I think he's going to be tremendous. It's got to be so, so hard having to sit there and you're partaking and you're practicing, but when you get to game time, it's got to be so difficult uh, for these guys. They got to sit the year out. It's going to be real, you know, tough for him. He sure. loves basketball and he, but he's done an unbelievable job. I love him. And he's another guy, you know, we have great kids and, uh, and, and they're all in and, and he's one of them. So, you know, I wanted to make sure that I mentioned him, even though he's not playing this year. He's a big part of our, he challenges our guys every day. Very important. We got a big time guard guarding Geo every day. And this kid had to guard some of the best at Texas, you know, players. So really good for our game prep. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back and we'll play a little game with the coach, who he likes, who he doesn't, what arenas he like, which ones he doesn't. <laughs> I'm sure there are some he does not. Also, your calls still 877-384-1869. If you guys have a question, now's the time. Go over and see Jordan. We'll get to that as well. And on Twitter at Rutgers Radio, it is the Rutgers basketball preview show from Quaker Steak and Loop here on Route 1 in Edison. Be right back on the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. At Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, caring is more than a job. It's our responsibility as a business leader and as citizens of this state. Through the Horizon Foundation for New Jersey, we're committed to working alongside those who share our goals. We're caring for our neighbors by supporting programs that help them manage important health issues. We're connecting people with health education that's easier to understand and accessible to all members of our diverse communities. We're creating inspiration by supporting arts and cultural programs that entertain, illuminate, and enrich the lives of our citizens. By sharing our time and resources, we aim to be not only a better company, but a better member of the communities where we work and live. Visit us at community.horizonblue.com 
and learn more about how the Horizon Foundation for New Jersey is working to support organizations that make New Jersey healthier. The Chris Ash Show returns after this local timeout. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Lube. Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day specials starting at just $2.50. And the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces. Enjoy our outdoor patio and bar open all year round. On the way to the game and need something to go? Give us a call, 732-777-WING. We cater events of any size. Watch all the games, have a great time, and enjoy the best wings in the USA. 561 Route 1 in Edison. 732-777-WING. Best tailgate? It's got to be burgers. And an ice cold Coke. Real football. Y pollo asado. Hoops and wings. It subs. Nah, hot dog. No, Dodger dog. I'll drink to that. Pass me a Coke. It's got to be crawfish. Mac and cheese. No, seven layer dip. Ribs. No contest. Hummus. Um, what? You need a hot grill and an ice cold Coke. Of course. Football and Coke. Come on. It's got to be Coke. Game day? Race day. Calls for Coke. You know it. It's tailgate 101. All right, welcome back. Quaker Steak and Lube, Route 1 in Edison, New Jersey. It is the Rutgers Basketball Preview Show with head coach Steve Peichel. We'll get back to that in just one second. Want to remind everybody, women's soccer, Big Ten tournament opening round Sunday, 1 o'clock, your sack field uh, as they take on second-seeded Minnesota, 1 p.m. in field hockey at Ohio State. Uh, 1 p.m. on Sunday as well. So don't forget about that this weekend. A lot of good stuff going on. I had mentioned to you some things happening um, at Rutgers in terms of the practice facilities and recruiting. And just give us an update where we're at. We see the building going up. I tell you, it's exciting. Yeah. Like they're just, the whole outside is done. The windows have gone up now, too. You can really see it. And hopefully, you know, by June, we'll enjoy the best practice facility in, in, in the Big Ten, the newest. And one of our first buildings in 40 years, too, at Rutgers. So it was time, you know, but so excited about that. All the great things. Coach Stringer now getting ready for 1,000 wins. Can you imagine that? A lot of 1, games. 1,000 wins. Unbelievable. She's going to be able to do that. How about our field hockey team? Is Meredith's done an unbelievable job in that. Our women's soccer team, they've won like 100 overtime games. I, I, mean, I don't know how to coach. Every time I see them, I say, you must be getting paid by the hour because you keep going into overtime every time. But there's a lot of great things going on. And, and, and two, it's not just basketball. Like we had 10 guys on our team last year, 3.0 or better. Like our GPA's up. These kids are good students. We have four guys on the dean's list. You know, our season tickets are up. Our social media stuff, as Ben always says to me, my assistant, we're up in social media viewers where, you know, there's a lot of good things going. And Rutgers is an unbelievable school. I mean, academically, I sit with the admissions people and they explain the kids that aren't getting into the school. And I'm like, oh, my God, I would have never got in here. Right. You know, I would have never got in here. I needed a really good jump shot maybe. But it's, it's a great place. It really is. And a lot of good things are going on in, 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 in our world of athletics, too getting better and better in, a, in, the, in the best league in the country. In terms of recruiting, the RWJ Barnabas Health Athletic Performance Center we're talking about, how does that help when you go out there and you're trying to bring it's, kids It's in? tremendous because now we put them the hard hats on and we actually go over there. Before, we just had the video rendition of what the, what the practice facility was going to look like, and that was exciting. That has helped us the last couple of years. You know, just having that and being able to explain to them, this is the commitment that Rutgers has made to athletics in the Big Ten, um, you know, has been really, really exciting. And to have that facility now that they can see it and walk through it and see the court and see the, you know, the, the gym that they're going to be able to work out 24 hours a day, the new nutrition center, the new weight room, you know, it's just exciting. And it's on an exciting part of campus. It overlooks, you know, Livingston, which is beautiful. It's getting, you know, they've added new buildings and all kinds of things to that campus so um, it's huge in recruiting and whenever you could show those shiny new toys understand the 17 18 19 year old they you know you could tell them about that old reliable car all you want they want the new shiny toy yeah you know, they, they want do. the Corvette and I think we did too back when we were that oh, age. now sure. I want the reliable now I want the reliable but means back in those days means we're getting old yeah we're getting old um, <laughs> a couple of things here Big Ten you've been through it now a couple of years favorite arena and your least favorite arena? Oh, wow. Um, they're all least favorites right wow. now. <laughs> um, you know, I tell you what, they all have a unique tradition to them. First of all, we, it's the 43rd year in a row that our league has led the nation in attendance. 
So when you go to these games, like we're the most watched league in the country, fan attendance-wise, it's an unbelievable stat. Not one year in a row, 43. So I laugh. The, they talk about all these other leagues and all these other, No, no, no. Every year, Indiana's sold out. Every year, Purdue's sold out. Every year, Michigan State games are sold out. It's the m most unbelievable environments, you know, on the road um, that you could play in. But, you know, Minnesota has a neat gym. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's unique. That was my first year this year. You know, of going to that gym with character, old. And then you got the new arenas and the, and the nice ones. I mean, Michigan State, the students are right on top of you. Tough environment to play. And it doesn't help that he usually has three lottery picks either. That makes it a little, yeah. bit, a little bit tougher. Um, but, you know, they're all, they're all great environments. And, and they're all just a little bit different. And they're all a little bit different in age. Um, I don't like playing at any of them. Now. I like the rack. Yeah. I like the rack, and I want to play all the games at the rack. I'm going to put that into the Big Ten next couple years. We play all the games at home. You know? <laughs> that would be something. That would be something. By the way, Purdue, very difficult. That you, is you know, one place. You know, that the, place is. the funny part of, like, Purdue is, you know, if you read the record books, like, you, don't th you think of Michigan State, and Matt Painter does an unbelievable job. He's a really good coach. You think about Indiana. They won five national championships. Purdue's won 25 Big Ten basketball titles. 25. Like, we've been in the league four years. You know, they've won 25 Purdue. You know, so think about the tradition. John Wooden played there. You know, like, these places have been doing it for a long time, a lot of tradition. Um, Purdue, really difficult place to play. Students are very – that's probably the loudest right. that, 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 that I've been in. Michigan State probably, probably second after that. Um, but I will tell you, a sleeper place, that's Nebraska – Unbelievably beautiful, brand new facility, unbelievable and, and loud and, and, and obviously a huge fan base. So, um, you know, tough place to play and they're good. What else is there to do out there? <laughs> like, not being funny. I mean, you're far away from anything out there. It's Nebraska basketball and football and nothing else. Yeah, they, you know, they, they come out. Yeah, they come out. They come out. All right, we got a question from the audience. There you go. How what about the tie? Look, Look at this. the tie. Handsome. When I go to Rutgers, I would like to play football. Okay, I like it. And I also want to play basketball. <laughs> Have you ever had anybody do that? You will be the first. <laughs> All right? Class of, <laughs> class, class of 2031. Is that a commitment? Is that a <laughs> Yes. There you go. It's a yes. I love it. I love it. You'll be the first one, okay? All right, you practice hard, and Thank you wear you. that tie, all right? I like it. I like it. He looks like he's ready. <laughs> I will Thank tell you. You got it. Thank you for coming. You're uh, welcome. You're welcome. We have to take a break. When we, come, when we come back, I want to get your take on the coaches in this conference. And then a couple of final thoughts. One guy on Twitter had an interesting question that you'll probably punch me for, but I'll ask you anyway. What oh. the heck? <laughs> uh, we'll take a quick break. Quaker Steak and Lube, Route 1 in Edison. It is the Rutgers Basketball Preview Show, and we're coming right back on the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Traffic. It can be more stressful than that last-second Hail Mary pass, but Nissan changed the game. Nissan Rogue has available Nissan Intelligent Mobility, like ProPilot Assist, that can start and stop in highway traffic all on its own and help keep you centered. Nissan Rogue. It's a game-changer. Get to Nissan, proud supporter of college athletics. ProPilot Assist is an available feature and cannot prevent collisions. Always monitor traffic conditions. Keep both hands on the steering wheel. See owner's manual for safety information. Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Lube. Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day specials starting at just $2.50, and the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces. Enjoy our outdoor patio and bar open all year round. On the way to the game and need something to go? Give us a call, 732-777-WING. We cater events of any size. Watch all the games, have a great time, and enjoy the best wings in the USA. 561 Route 1 in Edison. 732-777-WING. The Chris Ash Show returns after this local timeout. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. At Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, caring is more than a job. It's our responsibility as a business leader and as citizens of this state. Through the Horizon Foundation for New Jersey, we're committed to working alongside those who share our goals. We're caring for our neighbors by supporting programs that help them manage important health issues. We're connecting people with health education that's easier to understand and accessible to all members of our diverse communities. 
We're creating inspiration by supporting arts and cultural programs that entertain, illuminate, and enrich the lives of our citizens. By sharing our time and resources, we aim to be not only a better company, but a better member of the communities where we work and live. Visit us at community.horizonblue.com and learn more about how the Horizon Foundation for New Jersey is working to support organizations that make New Jersey healthier. All right, welcome back. A couple more minutes with Coach Steve Peichel, the Rutgers basketball preview show right here at Quaker Steak and Lube on Route 1 in Edison. A couple more for you, Coach. we got about three minutes or so. Uh, number one, the question I have for you is you've gone through this league now, and as a basketball fan that you are, just your takeaway on the coaches in this league now after a couple of years, anything has surprised you? Anything have you learned throughout the, uh, the last 24 months? Uh -huh. You know, you learn a lot, um, you know, in, in 20, and you learn something every day, but the coaches in this league are, are awesome. I mean, they're terrific people, first and foremost. We sit in a room every, you know, May at the end of the year, and we have our league meetings, and, you know, Tom Izzo's as good a guy as there is. He's a Hall of Fame coach. He's won, but he's just a good guy. And uh, you see how good and how well they're coached, and it doesn't matter the players. He's always had good He'll get three new ones, four new ones, and they still, you know, implement the same s stuff. So really, you know, admire him. Coach Collins is good a guy at Northwestern, as there's a great player at Duke, but a great person, you know, and you enjoy spending time with them. And, um, you know, Fran McCaffrey's hilarious, like probably, probably a great quote, I would think, if I was a media guy, and a really good coach, like offensively, you know, and out on the road working, um, you know, so – I admire all Matt Painter's done an unbelievable job. Um, you know, gets good players, keeps that program in, in, in great shape. So there's challenges, you know, everywhere you turn. And they're all a little different. They're all in different places in their careers. But what I found, like, they're humble guys, and, 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 and they're, really, they're really good guys. About 60 seconds. We've talked a lot about how tough the conference is and the arenas are tough to play in. And you have said many times these road games are really hard to win. What is it about it? Is it just the environment? Is it the crowd noise? Is it the travel? Is it everything? Is it something you put your finger on? You know, it's, it's everything. And, it, you know, on top of that, it's uh, teams are well prepared for everybody. There's no secrets anymore. Everyone gets information about everything. That's why I try to, you know, protect some of our information if, if you can, scrimmages and things like that. You know, there's so much information out there about every team. It makes it really hard, you know, to prepare to go on the road. And you're playing the fans. And I will tell you, too, referees ref differently, yeah. too, and that's not a knock. Referees have hard jobs, but the crowd screaming, yelling, 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 after a while, they start blowing that whistle Frustrating. and pointing towards the home team, too. So you got to fight that element, you know, too. And then on top of it, you're not used to the backboards and the rims. and the, You know, so you factor that, and every team shoots worse on the road. You know, the comfort of being at home just, you, you know, just, just different, too. So really difficult to win you got to be really a good basketball team to go on the road in this league too this league has the highest winning percentage home games of any league in the country so like you, you're going these guys have done it for a long time and, and at, at a high level and they got all those built-in advantages that you have at home and, and at Rutgers we have a good advantage too we've won a lot of games the last two years at the rack you know it helps us our guys sleep in their own beds they know the rims the fans the fans are cheering for them I mean the fans the cheerleaders we have the unbelievable band the dance team, like all those things are huge, you know, for us. Our players, they're 17, 18. They want to hear their names chanted. They want to, you know, like they, it's important to them. Yeah. Well, this has been fun. We got November 9th FDU. Everybody make sure you come out to the rack as we get the season underway. Awesome job. I'm looking forward to it. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for coming out tonight, too. I love it. Want to thank tonight. We got Paul Schrager, John Essick, Colin Osborne. Tim DeMartin, Luis Diego Milan, Jordan Ozer, and Kevin Lorenz, everybody for coming out. We thank you very much for it. Make sure you pack the rack November 9th against FDU. Should be a big season. Looking forward to it once again. Thanks very much, and good luck this season, Coach. Thank you, Jerry. Enjoy Appreciate it. it. And we want to thank Quaker Steak and Lube right here on Route 1 in Edison. Everybody, adios. Thank you for listening to the Rutgers Basketball Preview Show featuring Coach Steve Peichel. Tonight's show has been brought to you by...
For more information on Rutgers basketball, visit scarletknights.com. The Rutgers Basketball Preview Show has been a special presentation of IMG, America's home for college sports.